We bless you today, God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Bless you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you, God, because you alone, you alone are worthy of glory, honor, and praise. We forget about who we are. like you Lord there's no other God like you Lord test, test. I want to praise you today and I want to magnify you today God hallelujah one, two, one, two, one, two. thank you praise Jesus him. come on bless him. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus test, test. thank you Jesus Lord there's none like you there's none like you there's none like you Lord there's none like you, Lord. We give you praise today. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift your name up, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you. Mm. My rock, my sword, my shield, Lord, we thank you today. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yeah, Lord. 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 We thank you, Lord. It is over. Shut up. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We say yes, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Oh, mighty, yes. God, mighty 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 God, we say yes, mighty God. Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. We say yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yeah, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Though we may not always know what it looks like, Lord, we say yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yeah. Yeah. yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We say yes. Yeah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, yeah. mighty God. Mm. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Will your heart and soul say yes? Yes, Lord. 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 Yes. Will your heart and soul say yes? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Will your spirit still say yes? 
If I told you what I really from you, will your spirit still say yes? Yeah. Will your heart and soul say yes? Yeah. I say yes, Lord. I say yes. Will your spirit still say yes? I say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let the Spirit of the Lord fall on you in this place today. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. Thou art worthy. Yes, Lord. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. Thou art worthy. Mighty God. Thou art worthy. Oh, Abba, Father, like worthy, worthy, worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Thou art worthy, Lord. Nobody. We magnify you, Lord. There ain't nobody like you, Lord. You're amazing, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord. Lord, we say, come on in this old building, Lord. Come on and have your way, Lord. Come on in, Lord. Do what you want to do for as long as you want to, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Come on in and have your way, Lord. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. We welcome in you in Jesus, day. Lord. Have your way, have Lord. Way. Oh, have your way. Yeah. Have your way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we Lord. Bow down Come on in and have your way, Lord. Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Lord, there ain't no situation, Lord, that's too big for you, Jesus. There ain't no circumstance that's bigger than you, Jesus. So come on in and have your way, Lord. Way, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. We need you. We need you today. You're bigger than anything that we went through this week, Lord. We need you. You're bigger than anything that could come up in this week coming up, Lord. So, Lord, come on in and have your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Release your glory. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. We'll Did put worship in you before anything, Lord. Yes, Lord. We'll, wait we'll put worship in you before God. anything, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Almighty day. God. Come on in this old room and have come your way. Have Lord. Your Lord. 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 Come on in this old building. Have your way, Lamb of God. Have your way. Lord. Sit on the have throne. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way in this place. Get out the way. We acknowledge you, Lord, so you can lead. We lift you up, Father God. We magnify you, Lord, and we say there's nobody else like you, Lord. But we don't want to just say it, Lord. We want to live it, Lord. Nobody else like you, Lord Jesus. 
There's nobody like you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Father God, Lord, for bringing us through everything, Father God, Lord. No matter how big it seemed, Father God, Lord, you put us in situations to show up, Thank you, Jesus. That it could always be worse. And when we were down, Lord, you said it could always be better. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Lord, it's you, Father God. You give us what to think. You give us what to do. You give us where to go. You tell us what to say, Father God. It's all about you, Father God. We give reverence to you. Decrease us, Father God. Have your way. Lord, let us yes, put Lord. self behind, Father God, Lord. Have your way. And lift yes, you up, Father God. You said, Lord, when you be lifted up, Lying you will draw up. men unto you, Father God. We want to hear you roar. Yes, Lord. So, yes, Lord, we lift you up, Father God, that you would do we the drawing, Father God. Road. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. We lift up our kids. We lift you higher, Lord Jesus. We lift you higher, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. You reign. Lord, we lift you higher, Lord Jesus. You reign. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Have your way. We will be careful, Lord. Give you all the glory. All the glory belongs to you. And all the praise is yours, Lord. It's yours, Lord. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. We yes. say hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, release your anointing in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Fill this room with your presence. Let us have a God experience like never before. As you reign in the atmosphere, God, we know that your presence is here today. Yes, Lord. As we get out of the way, that you take the way, oh God. That you display your glory in this yes, room, Lord, oh yes, God. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That every person would know, oh God, that you're here. Yes, Lord. Moving by your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for a mighty move of God in this place today, oh God. That signs and wonders will follow us as believers. Souls to be saved, lives to be healed. People be transformed, oh God, to become more and more conducive to your right now, image. Lord, right now, your right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord. Breathe Do it, God. Right now, Lord. Do it, God. For your glory. Right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Right now, Lord. Right now. Breathe on us. Right now, Lord. Shower down, shower down. Sing your spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Rain on us. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Breathe on us. Shower down, shower down. Shower down, shower down. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Sing your spirit, Lord. Rain on us. Shower down, shower down, shower down, shower down. Sing your spirit, Sing Lord. Your spirit, Lord. Rain, rain on us. Come and breathe, breathe on us. Shower down, shower down, shower down. Shower down. Let your spirit fall. Shower down in this shower room. down. Send your spirit, Send Lord. your spirit, Lord. Come on and breathe. Breathe in us, God. I hear the Lord. Breathe in us, God. Moving in this place. Yesterday we had some very strong winds. Shift the atmosphere. And one thing I noticed, the 
that his voice is not in that, but his voice is in a small, still voice. But I hear the Lord saying, there's healing in this room. Come on, I need to know if you'll believe that or not. There's healing in this room. There's healing, hallelujah. Those of you watching Facebook and YouTube, there's healing, there's healing in your homes right now in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of something I was reading recently of Peter going into a trance. He went on top of the rooftop of the building and he found himself being hungry. As they were preparing him something to eat, he went into a trance and he saw a blanket coming from heaven. In each corner of the blanket, there was beasts, different beasts holding each corner and laid it down before Peter. And God says to him, kill and eat. There's some things in our lives that we got to kill spiritually so that we can be fed by God. Hallelujah. So as I was reading that and continue reading it, and Peter was like, I don't eat unclean meat. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit. And God says, look, anything that I lay before you, I have cleaned. So he not only saw four-legged beasts, he saw serpents, he saw all kinds of things that he laid before Peter. And God said, I have cleaned it for your good. And what God was preparing for Peter, he was preparing Peter to go to Cornelius' house. Because Cornelius had a vision. Cornelius had an encounter, a God encounter. And I don't know about you, but if you, if you, if, if, is there anybody out there ever experienced a God encounter? Hallelujah. So here's the thing right here. What I'm trying to say is right here is that in those days, the Gentiles were considered outcasts. God was showing Peter that look, that there's going to be three men coming. You need to go with those three men. And when them three men got finished explaining to Peter what Cornelius has something to do, Peter invited them in. They, the next day they went on to Cornelius' house. But what I'm trying to say to you all that no matter how bad things are in your life, how messed up you is, God said I'm able to clean you up. And I, I was saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, it's kind of like what I believe that our ministry is a judgment-free zone ministry. Because I see great things in everybody. I don't look at what you have done. I look at what God is capable of doing in your life if you give him a try. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you change your mind and you is a change of mind and a change of heart come upon you and you lift those hands up, watch God do something incredible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God praise in here. Let us rise to our feet. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring that your healing power is in this room right now. As you begin to overflow in our lives, healing our aches and our pains, our sickness, whatever the condition may be, anxiety, 
frustration, feeling overwhelmed, ready to throw in the towel, back up against the wall, about to lose your mind and everything connected to it. Hallelujah. Your life. Lord, I speak life in every broken situation. I know that you are a healer. I know that you are a deliverer. You are a way maker. You are a promise keeper. We yield to your will and your purpose over our lives. And we thank you in advance for the overflow that has come into this house. But Lord, we pause and ask that you touch those that are lost outside of these walls in this building. Somebody needs you right now. Some young lady, some young man need a touch from you right now, a change of heart. Someone's on the verge of suicide. Someone's on the verge of saying, I'm not going to do church anymore. But God, I know that you're able. How many of you know that he's able? Hallelujah. I need at least two or three people to say he's able. He's able. If you're watching via Facebook, why don't you put in your comments, he's able. He's able. He's able. See, because have you ever I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to pay for and put it like this for you. I want you to picture a broken glass. Shattered into thousands of pieces. To you, it's a mind-boggling puzzle. But to God, it only takes one word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. What you're dealing with, God, I got one word for your situation. Hallelujah. All he got to say is healed. Be healed. Be restored. Hallelujah. But how many of you believe that God is able to do that? How many of you able to believe that God is able to restore your situation? Restore your home. Restore your livelihood. Restore your brokenness. Restore your mental anguish. Restore. Restore. Somebody shout Restore. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Charles, I, I took a moment this week and I came in the sanctuary and I began to sit down right where Minister Harris is sitting at now and had a conversation with the Lord. And before you know it, that in my conversation, when you need God to lift things up off of you, I felt the Lord just literally just taking his hand and just reaching into the depths of my soul and removing the pressure. Hallelujah. And all you got to do is believe and ask. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And one of the things that I want y'all to understand right now is that where your faith is, your heart must be also. Yeah. Where your faith is, your heart must be also. Hallelujah. If you can believe it, God can do it. If you can speak it, God can do it. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. I want to, we're going to read our scripture for this morning. And... We're going to be reading St. Mark's 11, chapter 11, verse 22.
Before Jesus gives this illustration when he talks about the fig tree, he talks about the fig tree and then he begins to emphasize in verse 22. But verse 20, he says, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. I was telling someone the other day, can you turn me down just a little bit and get feedback? I was telling someone the other day that if you're going to just pluck the dandelions out of your yard, you wake up the next morning and it's back again. Uh, but the best way to get rid of anything that you don't want in your yard is to dig it up from the roots. And it's something about the roots that if there's a small piece of that root left in that ground, when the rain hit it, it's going to produce again. See, I'm saying this because for the simple fact, there's the enemy's tactics is that he has planted a seed that God is saying it's time to pluck it out by the roots. See, because you wonder why you keep going back. It's because you moved ahead, but not the roots. <laughs> Can I speak to somebody today? Am I speaking? You, you moved ahead. The head ain't the problem, it's the root. We got to get down to the root of the problem. And once you figure out the root of it and remove that, then you'll see that it's all right now. So, and the Peter called to remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed cursed is withered away. God can speak a word to your situation and curse it and cause it to dry up and die. See, the more we feed it, the more it produces. But God says it's time to kill it at the root. Verse 22. Repeat out to me, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. What keeps us from getting what we speak? Doubt. Doubt could be planted in your spirit. When God said we got to remove the doubt today. Because there's something that some of y'all want, that hallelujah, that every time you get close, doubt steps in and stops you. But listen, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye should have them. You see the role right there? You, when, you, when you get rid of the doubt, when you get rid of the doubt and you start believing. See, we got to pluck the doubt up by the root. Hallelujah. Because there's some things a lot of us have been waiting on and it's only because doubt has stopped you from receiving what you want. Because the seed of doubt. Read with me. And when... You stand praying, forgive, 
If you have aught against any, that's your Father. Also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses, but, but, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. I want you to repeat after me, Lord, forgive me of all my sins, knowing and unknowingly, come into my heart and my life and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's give God praise in the word of God. It's blessed in this place. I want to just emphasize a little bit more on the seed. A lot of farmers, there's a time when they are planting. And I remember as a little boy, there was a um, man named Mr. Brewster. Brewster. We call him Mr. Brewster. And he lived right off of 2nd and Lloyd. But he had a field. He had a field a couple houses down right on 2nd Street between Lloyd and Brown. And I saw him out there planting, and he was an older guy, and I said, can I help you? And I didn't want no money. I said, I just want to learn what you're doing. And so he said, well, take this, this hole, this, this, this instrument, and I want you to chop the dirt and draw a line down. And I said, okay. And he said, well, I'm planting greens over here, and I'm planting this, and I'm planting that. And you know how you know, people get down. They plant some everything, tomatoes, this, that, and the other. They plant a whole lot of stuff. So it was a big field, so it was a lot of digging. I didn't want anything but wisdom. I wanted knowledge. I, I wanted to know something about this because I didn't grow up a farm. My mother did. My father did. They know about planting. But just to have that experience as a young man. And he said, well, you come by and take the water hose and I'm allow you to water the sea. Now, it's, it's a thing where you can put too much water. And so they teach you everything you need to know. See, you have people, you have young people, you have older people, even today, dealing with a seed problem. I'm talking about a bad seed. Well, we keep referring back to things that have happened in our life. And when I read in the Bible, we talk about the tares and the wheat. The master tells the servant to let them both grow together because as they're growing, they look just alike. But when they become full grown, only then will you be able to distinguish one from the other. So the thing I'm trying to say is that that. It's time for us to plant good seeds in our lives. When we're planting good seeds, we're planting seeds in our children, we're planting seeds in our daughter, and people that we encounter. People, well, well, I want you to understand one thing. And I know you probably learned this, Pastor Charles, also during your walk. Uh, what we do around people, we're shedding seeds. What we're doing, what we're doing around people, because people are watching leadership on what they are doing. Character, your character, character of a leader is very important because whether you believe it or not, you got a package of seeds everywhere you go. 66 books in the Bible is following you and people are judging you by what you do. 
We're planting seeds. And my thing is, hallelujah, is that where you're going, what you're doing. Are you planting seeds? Do you want people to remember you for the seeds that you have planted or are you planting bad seeds? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to plant good seeds so that people will remember who I am. The kind of person I am. The character of an individual must be worn on the outside as well as the inside. Hallelujah. See, here's the thing, here's the thing right here. What we don't understand about planting the seed. I remember being in elementary school, and every year we'll get the little cups, and the teacher will give us some seeds and put it in there, and we'll put it in the window, and we'll begin to see the seed starting to come through the dirt. And the roots begin to manifest underneath. But the thing you don't understand is that the seed has to die. <laughs> the seed has to die before it can produce. I don't know why I'm, I'm, not, I'm in this area right here, but I just feel God doing something right now. The seed has to die in the ground. You don't see that process. You don't see that process because all you're doing is just adding water. And God turns around and he gives you the what? The increase out of it. He gives you the increase. He brings life. Life comes through that. And when a kids like my daughter, Tori, my grandson, they become amazed if they plant something and see something grow. Hallelujah. How do you know what you're growing? If I had a bag of seeds... And, I, and, and it's, there's no picture on it, or they made a mistake at the factory and gave you the wrong things, you planted carrots, but you get tomatoes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's just like most people saying, well, I, I, want, a, I, want, I want a boy, but you get a girl. Whatever God wants you to have, you're going to have it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where are you planting your seeds? Let me go back again. So I was able to plant the seed with Mr. Brewster. Brewster, he's long gone now. And harvest what we grow. Learning the process. The most interesting thing that I learned, Minister Salim, is this right here is that though older people have the capability and the ability to plant a seed in a bad situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, give God praise. And if you really want to know, you got to think about Gideon. How do you plant Food in a cave. Think about that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Ooh. I'm saying all this because I feel God saying somebody is about to get a harvest. <laughs> somebody is about to get a harvest. You need to give God praise and say, Lord, let it be me. Hallelujah. You may not be expecting it. Matter of fact, you probably planted that seed 20 years ago. It is taking that long to put. I don't think some, I think some of y'all missed this. I think some of y'all missed this. There's some, some, there, there's some creatures. Let's talk about the caterpillar just for a second. Just want to share this with you. Because while I was saying that the Lord showed me something, I was watching the National Geographic channel some years ago, and they were talking about the caterpillars and how slow they move. And they, and they eat, they, 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 as they are caterpillar, all they do is eat, 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 eat. 
they're preparing themselves to die just to be born again. In this case, on this channel, they were showing that how caterpillars develop in, I believe it's, oh, in, excuse me, in Alaska, where the process is longer than the caterpillar we see here. Because the weather is so different. They kept track of one caterpillar that they would figure it will, put, it, it will be a butterfly this year. It does not matter how long it was dead in that cocoon. Just a matter of time, it will come out as a butterfly. But because of the season that it had freezing over, and the seasons didn't come like they came over here, it took one caterpillar 10 years. See, some of y'all may have been on a 10-year wait, hallelujah. But it does not mean that God has forgotten about you, hallelujah. Because what you're waiting on, God got exactly what you need. I don't know who this is for, but you've been waiting on something great. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying he's going to bring it to you with wings. Hallelujah. He's going to bring it to you on wings. He's going to bring it to you on wings. You've been waiting on it. Get ready, get ready, get ready. God is about to dump some. My God, my God, my God. I don't care how long you've been waiting. God got a blessing with your name on it. And if you believe that to be true, come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Listen, at this time, I'm going to see if I can get a song from the praise team. It's good to see my niece here on today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us want to be filled by God. Come on and help us sing. Let praises rise. Let praises rise on the inside. On the inside. Of me, may you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. Come feel my life on the inside, on the inside of me. Set me on fire on the inside, on the inside of me. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be dead. I come on, sing with me. Let praise, let praise is right on the inside, on the inside, on the inside, on the inside of me. Of me. 
Come fill my life. Fill my life on the inside. On the inside. On the inside. On the inside of me. Lord, may you delight. On the inside. On the inside. On the inside. On the inside. Of me. Of me. Set me on fire. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be glorified for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted From the inside of me. Come fill my life. Come fill my life. From the inside. From the inside. From the inside of me. May you delay. Yes, Lord. From the inside. On the inside of me. Set me on fire, Lord. Set me on fire. From the inside. From the inside of me. All I want. All I want is for you. Yes, for you to be glorified. You to be glorified, Lord. You to be lifted. Decrease me, Lord, that you may increase. All I want. Have your way in my life, Lord. It's for you. For you to be glorified. For you to be lifted. All I want. All I want. It's for you. Inside. It has no other choice but to manifest on the outside. 
We can't dress it up. It has to be on the inside. On the inside. Lord, do what you do, Lord. On the inside. On the inside of me. Come on and bless the Lord in this place. Lord, you're worthy, Lord Jesus. I want to take it back one more time. You know, we ain't done yet. Y'all can have a seat if you want to. <laughs> I want to take it back because this is in my spirit. And if y'all don't mind musicians, y'all are world-renowned musicians. all right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Ain't no need to just sitting there. Come on. Just give God praise. Hallelujah. See, I, I love that song because it does something to me. Lord, prepare me. Get me ready to be a living sacrifice. Pure and holy. But it also takes me to be ready. Romans 12 and 1. I Present our bodies you, as a living sacrifice. It's a powerful thing. Gotta right there. be ready for you, Jesus. Powerful thing, powerful thing, powerful things. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another hand, praise. I'm gonna pull up something here. I want to read to you. Hallelujah. I want to read that. I want to read something to you. I want to read it. I want to read it. Romans 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. Your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind. That's exactly where the seed of doubt, the seed of frustration, anxiety, everything that you can think about, that's exactly where it takes roots at, right there in your mind. But renew your mind that you may that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on, let's give God another hand, praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. I am just so excited today because God is about to do some great things. And I'm also excited also is that, you know, our Asian community around here. Um, they are mostly K Koreans. Um, they're coming back. They start back today. So they'll be coming back in here after the service, after we're done here today. Let's give God praise for them. And got a chance to meet with the pastor again. Uh, we haven't been here in a year since the pandemic. They haven't been here in a year. And I've been seeing them, you know, see the pastor driving in the neighborhood every once in a while. And finally, he reached out again and spoke with him. And they want to come back and use the sanctuary. And have they have practice on Saturday. They have practice last week, Saturday. But if any of you ever been here when they practice or sing and y'all heard the choir, we definitely, when this get a whole lot better, we definitely got to get that choir. Because I'm telling you, a lot of them can't speak English, but they, for some odd reason, when they sing, they sing in English words. <laughs> and so, I, I, you know, it, it, you know it, it does something to me. So, and so I definitely want to hear them uh, play and sing. And they have such a beautiful, um, they got their own band, they got their own choir. And they're just amazing people. And I know it's been a lot of things uh, when it comes down to, we've been hearing a lot about a lot of Asian hate stuff like that and how people have been doing hate crimes to them and just attacking them for unapparent reasons um, but there's a lot of them in this neighborhood and if they need a place to worship our doors are open amen, amen. hallelujah so let's give God praise for Zion <laughs> hallelujah and another thing hallelujah when is Mother's Day coming? Our Mother's Day is coming up. That's next week or next week Sunday. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everybody to get your mama dressed up and bring her on to church next Sunday. And let's have a Holy Ghost good time next Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you ain't, she ain't been here in a while, you know, i just so happy that I have a beautiful wife who's a great mother to all of our daughters and our children. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. But, you know, I also want to say I only got one mother, biological mother and a mother-in-law, and I love them both, and they're some great people, and I thank God for them. Amen. Hallelujah. And my grandmother, who just had a birthday, amen. She just turned 27. <laughs> I just took 50, 60 years off of that, amen. But amen. And also, Grace had a birthday, amen. Let's give, let's give our praise for our birthday. Uh, Joseph, you had a birthday? Same day as my grandmother, amen. Joseph had a birthday, man. He just turned, what, 24? Amen. Let's give it up, amen. Uh, my, my, my father's birthday is the same day as Grace, um, and I, um, I haven't been there to see, he's, he's gone on to glory, amen, I haven't been there to see him in a while, so 
me and my wife, we uh, jumped in the car and we took a ride on down to, uh, to the cemetery and we stood there and visited him. My brother Herbert, he knew exactly how to find him. I think he'd been up there a lot of times, amen. But he's my father pretty much in image, amen. Everything that they do, they, they, he's just like my father. And so he said, just give me 10 minutes. So that means from Mill Road and 43rd, Sherman, well, let me say Sherman, Graceland Cemetery from 14th and Burla. He made it there in 10 minutes. I don't know how fast he was driving, but, you know, he said, take this road and you go down that road. But in, in, it's, it's so different now because they changed things over. So if you ain't been there in a while and you go towards the back where he is, if you got family members back there and they didn't made it bigger back there, did a whole lot of different landscaping, so you'll be kind of confused because what used to be what the gate was, is the gate ain't there no more. So, uh, so I was able to um, go there. We was there for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. But God, amen. And what I, I, I said, I said, God, you are so amazing because when my dad got sick, he had enough time to get to know the Lord. Everybody ain't going to get that opportunity. Come on, somebody. Everybody ain't going to get that opportunity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody ain't going to get that opportunity. And it's amazing. Amen. Ooh. It's time to be blessed. Amen. I ain't going to pull on the service. It's time to be blessed. It's good to see everybody. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, it's good to see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but I was going to say this too. Some of y'all, if y'all don't know, Deacon Cannon. Deacon Cannon just bought the basket up here. But just in case, you know, because he be coming up with some interesting things. And you never know what he may find in his journey. You know, so if you, I told him he need to get them, get his grandchildren or something like that and start showing that stuff off because, you know, you can get a whole lot for that. Amen. Amen. I know there was a lot of people that was born in April. Uh, we used to, we, before the pandemic, we used to get a birthday cake for every month. But I'm thinking we still can get some cake, have somebody cut it, set it out, just grab your cake and go. So we'll start getting those cakes again starting June, amen, June coming up, amen. And again, I want to say again, we welcome Charlene and Anthony back from their journey. They had an interesting journey. They had a long, long, long road. I don't know how y'all did it, but I, that was a long drive, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. April was there. April drove too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Did they have a lot of hills and mountains and valleys? Yes, yeah, so, uh, term. Huh? Yeah, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, once you get down about Pennsylvania, you are dealing with some steep hills. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Me and my wife, we, we took the kids to North Carolina. We drove, and those mountains are some steep grades, but God. Hallelujah. You lose control going. Your brakes go on that mountain. Your brakes go on that hill. You need to, you ain't finna stop like the Flintstones. Amen. My grandson finna be three years old. Look at him. 
we got to put them on a hand leash. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know they got the little hand leashes now, you know, for the little kids. I don't know who came up with that idea, but. Everybody, amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. You know what a lot of y'all just did? Y'all just planted a seed into the ministry by your giving, amen. So we're going to believe God to give you back, hallelujah, what you desire and what you need, amen. Let us stand to our feet. I thank and praise God for Rodney playing those drums right there, amen. He came in and did, he said, Pastor, can I, can I play those right there? Ain't nobody playing them. <laughs> I said, go right ahead. <laughs> and believe me, Sunday morning come, the phone ringing. What time you coming to get me, Pastor? <laughs> so I will be there at 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock come. What time you said you coming, Pastor? <laughs> I said 10 o'clock. I love that young man. Amen. Let's give God praise for him. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We have announcements too also? Okay, we're going to have some announcements, amen. And I want to say that the, the, the missionary work the, that Charlene and Anthony and all the ones that go with them on their missionary journeys, they're doing a great thing. And this month, they're going to be here in Milwaukee, Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna do our, we're gonna try to show up and hit, support them in, in that endeavor. Amen. Hallelujah. I seen it on live Facebook. Uh, uh, Minister April Price she put it on Facebook, and I was watching how y'all was playing them drums. Y'all was doing y'all thing down there. You know, Anthony said he got to do a do over, right? Amen. Hallelujah. You got to go on phases. Phases section. <laughs> That's a big city. You can't just go in one. You got you got a whole lot to see, and it's hard to get around. I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh. Praise the Lord, Father God. We thank and praise you for every giver in this place. Lord, I thank you for the seed that they have sown in this place. I'm asking God that you would give back to them. God, press down, shaking together, and running over. Bless them with whatever they need today, God. Let their needs be met according to your word, God. Do it for them right now, God. It doesn't matter how much they give, hallelujah, but God loves a cheerful giver. Somebody need a home. Somebody need a car. Somebody need a job. Somebody need a promotion. Somebody need increase, hallelujah. But whatever the need is, whether they need a touch, Healing, whatever the need is, God, you do it today. You do it today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, you will be praised and you will be glorified in this place like never before. Somebody give God praise and say amen. Now I want you to repeat out to me. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. We're going to do that one more time. Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Now give God praise in this place. Yes, Lord. 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 
my God, yes, my God, God, my God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't he all right? Hallelujah. Look, we're going to get another song this morning. And we're going to get announcements in just one second. And then once that song has been sung, then I pray y'all came prepared for a word today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Sandra, you got your mic? Amen. I heard T.D. Jakes preach the sermon, Don't Drop the Mic. <laughs> Amen. Um, first, giving unto to God who's hidden my life and to the pastors and ministers and just all of you. Um, I come with the announcements. But before I do, I, I have a testimony for um, Mother Cannon. Mother Cannon called me yesterday and she said, well, I'm gone. I'll, I'll be back. I said, okay. I didn't know where she was going. She went on one of her little trips. And I laid down last night after I got home and I'm watching the news and it was breaking news. Um, up in Green Bay, there was an active shooter. I didn't know what location my mother was at. So I called her. Now mind you, mama don't usually answer her phone take her a minute to get to it. She answered her phone. I said, thank you, Jesus, because the active shooter was where she was. But God is good because all of them, all of them, four people got shot, three died, one is in critical condition. But Mama came home safe. He's good, and he's good all the time. I know, I know she's a little shaken up, but she says she was nowhere near the, near the shooting. She was in another building, but God is good. Amen. So um, our announcements are as follows. Um, Women's Day, the women are in charge um, of, of service that day. And so um, we did last year, we all sung for, mo for, 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 I mean, for Mother's Day, we all sung. And we have a rehearsal this Thursday at 5 o'clock for all those uh, mothers or women who want to participate. It's going to be here at Redeemed Faith. So come out and let's just have a good time in the Lord and so we can praise God together on, um, on next Sunday. Amen? And also, if you was not um, with us at the meeting, um, and no one talked to you. If you are a mother, please see myself or Sister Davis um, so that we can uh, run some things by you before you leave. Also, Memorial Day is coming up. It's next month. Um, and we do it every year. We honor our, um, our, lo our loved ones who have gone on before us. And if any of you have lost loved ones um, in the last year, I do need their names so that they can be honored on that day. Also, if they died of COVID, let me know as well. Um, we're going to do something a little different for them to honor them, those individuals. Okay? Um, I would like the names no later than the 22nd of May. But um, I will be taking them up until the end. But it does take time to prepare um, the presentation. So I would love to have that information. And um, thank you. These are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for that. Amen. I need to add something. Go ahead. Also, um, those who are graduating um, out there in Facebook land, those who um, are graduating and those who graduated last year, please see me um, so I can get your information. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So if you're graduating from high school, please give Sandra Cannon a call. Amen. We have a couple of Sandras in here. And so that we can do something for you. Amen. We want to be able to bless 
those graduating students. And also, we want to be able to do something for those that graduated last year that we didn't get a chance to give neither. So we're going to be doing a whole lot of something for those students. Um, amen? Amen. So we will be getting, I'll be, I will be uh, meeting with Sandra Cannon, and we'll be talking about um, what we're going to be doing for those students that graduated here. Amen. It's a part of this ministry. We thank and praise God for them, their hard work. Because I'm telling you right now, we need to do something extra special for them. Because these last two, these last year, last year, by the end of last year, it was hard. And then this year was even harder for a lot of them. And they just not starting to let kids back in school. And, but I can almost imagine with those parents that had to do the at-home schooling and, you know, kids going online and, I think that was just, man, that had to be like mind blowing. I mean, I'm not a school teacher, but I applaud. Let's give the school teachers a hand praise because Jesus, I know some of them students are like, I can't wait to go back to school because my mama is not a good teacher. My daddy is not a good teacher. <laughs> they couldn't wait, like, good Lord. But treat your teachers right, then you won't have to worry about that. Amen. <laughs> you don't want mama teaching, you treat them teachers right. Love on them. Hallelujah. Listen to them. Amen. Let's give God that hand praise. Deacon, you have something you want to say? Come on up. Six years, but you know, we had ups and downs, but I found out to tell when younger people get married, you know what I tell them? Don't listen to nobody. Believe in your heart. You know that that's how you that's what it takes to trust and believe in, in your spouse and who you love. You know, but whatever you do, do not listen to other people. But I but I come here to say it because you know the day Yesterday, you know, it did kind of hard that last night. But you know what? I thank God, you know, because I knew it was something, but I couldn't pitch it. But something, you know, something bothered people. You know, you can tell when God is working, right? You can tell when God is working. But he always had you covered. Not just you, your family. See, he said to be all around you, but won't come near you. Then, like the 91st Psalm said, you see him fall. All different ways around you. But you know what? I learned in this journey that he got you covered. He got you covered. I keep figuring that out more and more. So my pastor said, you know, the last week about you got to follow your shepherd. Follow your shepherd advice, you know. If we follow our shepherd advice, you know, the things that we go through in life, we won't have to. Because God put the shepherd there to lead the sheep. And it takes us to follow. When the church is called, we come. When the, when the church is sending you, you got to go. You got to go because you know what? Because we the sheep. It, ain't, it don't take the pastor. When he put on, the, on, on, you, on uh, YouTube, right? But it takes the sheep to get sheep. The pastor just made the word. And I thank God for that. You know that? That he gave me the ability to deal with young men and talk to them. And like this young man here. My nephew, I thank God for him because he, you know, he, he, he's seeking, he's seeking, he's seeking, he, 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 he's seeking, and he, what he was talking to me, there he seeking. But now I told him God is going to use him to get the, the younger one. See, what it said in the, in the word that the older man brings dreams, the younger man is for war. It takes the older man to teach the younger one to go out into the world. He 
So the knowledge God give us, you know, I don't know what it is, but God is working. He's he doing the work. He's doing the work so great that he he put it online. You know that? When he put it online, look what's happening. Look what's happening because he wanted to reach all around the globe. And how could we get all around the globe by him being online? I try to keep praying my strength in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give God praise. Look, we're going to get one more song, and um, then we're going to get the word of God. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Anybody going through anything? Is anybody going through anything? I mean, anything, anybody got anything in their life that they want God to do something about? I just want to be an encouragement today that there's no strength. There's no power from anything or anyone else. We got to give it all to God. Hallelujah.
Lord, send a revival. Send a revival again. You have won. Oh, Lord, you won again. You have won again. I can make it on my you own. You have won again. I did let the power fall. You have won I thank you that it fell on me, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You're yes, worthy, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You have won. You have won again. You have won. Come on, let's give God praise. Hey. You was against the wall, you can stand today and say, you have won When you was about to throw in the towel, you can stand today. When you was about to commit suicide, you can stand today and say, Lord, you have won You are the one again.
for his mercy endureth forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He won again. On Calvary's cross, he won again. When he rose from the dead, he won again. He took the keys from hell. He won again. That's exciting news. That he won for our victory. That we don't have to live a defeated life. Because in him we're champions. We're overcomers. We're mighty beings in the sight of God. Cause his presence to dwell in our midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Cornell. All of you, our Father's children, it's a blessing just to be here. You know, we could have been any other place on this Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. But we purpose to be in the house of God one more time. I don't know about you, but I come with excitement. Because God has been too good to me to be quiet. That every time I come into the house of God, I come with an expectancy for God to show up and show out. Every time we call on the name of Jesus, God begins to shift the atmosphere in your life. See, I was on a prayer line this morning, and we had a few brothers on there, and, and, and they were quiet. But it was prayer Sunday. We have every other Sunday we devote to prayer. And I said, I want us all to participate in praying. Only a few people open up their mouth. But then I heard Pastor Connell's voice in my spirit to the closed mouth won't get fed. And then I heard the voice of the Lord said, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask with the wrong intentions, with the wrong motives. And I come to declare to you today that God is in the building. The presence of the Lord is in the house today. And if you're expecting God to do something for you today, you got to open up your mouth and praise him. Come on, give God some praise in here today. Because God has won the victory through yeah. Jesus Christ again. And you have the victory. Doesn't matter what the devil says about you. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter how you feel right now. Hallelujah. God has won the victory. Hallelujah. So I come to give God some praise. I come to worship the King of glory. I come to magnify his name. Because God, you've been too good to me. To sit down and say nothing. But you brought me a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. God, we worship you. You're worthy of all the glory. Yeah! Woo! Woo! See, the devil don't like it when you praise him. He wants you to be in confusion. He wants you to sit in the house of God and don't open up your mouth and say nothing. Because he knows I can silence your voice. I can take your strength. I can take your victory. I can leave you in defeat. But God has given us a voice today. Yes. To magnify the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. For he is good. Thank you, Lord. His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Tell me, waiting on my help, y'all. I'm waiting on my help right now. Glory to God, glory to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall forever be in my mouth. 
I come to magnify the King of Glory. Hallelujah. I come to lift them high above Hallelujah. all my troubles. Hallelujah. I come to lift them high above my circumstances. I come to praise the name of the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord Glory to God. Yeah. 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 I come to worship him. I come to lift him up. Yes, Lord. I come to give him the glory. Yes, Lord. I come to give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He woke me up this morning. With my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm excited about it. He could have left me in my bed. Could have left the deaf angel in my room. But he watched over us all night long. He is the best angel. All night and all day. To watch over us. Yes, he did. I don't know about you today, but I got angels watching over me. I got angels surrounding me. God says we got a cloud of witnesses that sit in the heavenly places. They're rooting for you to keep going on. They're pushing you in your place. They say, come on, you can make it. You can overcome. Come, I am your victorious king. I won the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is breaking things in the atmosphere right now. He's breaking some things up in your life right now. See, the thing about God, he knows we're coming to his house, burning down with problems and situations, and we sit here in a place of misery looking for a pity party in the house of God. But God says, today I'm breaking the spirit off your mind. I'm breaking, I'm breaking, I'm breaking, I'm breaking, I'm breaking off your mind right now in the name of Jesus. So I'm mad at the devil. I get mad at the devil sometimes. What do you want to bring confusion in my life? I don't have time for that mess. I said, you got to go. You got to go in the name of Jesus. Deacon Cannon, open the door right now. Open the door. I feel God saying, open the door. Satan, you got to go from this place. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name. Your unclean spirit have to leave the atmosphere right now. In the name of Jesus. I release the bomb of Gilead. I release the anointing power of God to shake up the foundation. Everything is not like God. You get out of here right now in the name of Jesus. We're not taking it no more. You can close it. We're not taking it no more. I don't know about you, but I'm taking back my authority. I'm taking back my praise. I'm taking back my sanity. I'm taking back my heart. Because the devil thought he was going to steal it. But I come to tell him, I serve you notice in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can't have our stuff no you more. We're have. taking it back. We're taking you it back. We're have. taking it back. In the name you of Jesus. Have. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Right now, God. Oh, right now, God. We're taking our finances back. Right now, God. We're taking our family back. Right now, God. We're taking our children back. Right now, God. In the name of Jesus. God, purify. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Purify. Jesus. Purify. Jesus. The atmosphere. Purify our hearts right now. In the name of Jesus. Take away the sluggishness. Take away the slothfulness. Take away the rebellion. Take away the stubbornness. Take away the hatred. Yes, Take away yes, resentment. Lord. Take Do away Jesus. misery and bitterness. Do right Jesus. now in the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. I speak peace in the house of God. 
I declare the peace of God that you, God, will crush Satan underneath our feet because we are more than a conqueror. We're not taking it anymore from him. We're tired of the devil messing with us, God. But today we declare we shall live in victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We have won again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have won, he again. won the victory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He won the victory. I love that song. I love hearing Anthony sing that song. That just blesses my soul. I thank God for the musicians today. I am really so blessed to be part of this what God is doing in this place even though confusion come in the house sometimes even though some people get the backbite of one another in the house of God it's okay cause you know what the more you backbite the more you're pushing to our purpose the more you slander one another in the house of God God says it's promotion cause the more you pushed me the more high I'm going in him. I love to worship the king. I love to bow down in his presence. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship you. Come on, you know it. Bow down and worship you. Enter in. Oh, enter So bow down. And worship him, worship him, oh, worship him. Lord, we bow down in your presence. We invoke your presence, God, as we enter into the king's chamber, that you would speak to our hearts by divine revelation to feed us like a shepherd feeds his flock that you lead us in the direction you ordained for us to go that you purify our minds let the all consuming fire burn up things in our lives God. it's not like you in the name of Jesus and we thank you. His holy ground. This is holy ground, holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So come and bow down. So come. Actually, where everyone stand across the room. I thank God for our shepherd and his wife, his family, for the ministry. I thank God because this is a season of entering in to a new dimension. I keep seeing dimensions in my mind. Pastor Cornell, God says, This is a season, He's going to take you to a deeper dimension. You thought you tapped into a revelation. But I hear God saying there's a deeper revelation about to unfold to you as you've been laboring before his presence. God says he's taking you to a deeper dimension. And in that place, there's going to be expansions. Things you've been praying for. God says expansions about to unfold before you because of the spirit of the living God that's upon your heart. 
Glory to God. Shetako Shabbat. Hallelujah. If you have a Bible, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Thank God for the ministers and the prophets in this house. For all of you. Expect God to do something in this season. Because God is releasing promises blessings, favor, his will, his plan, his purpose into your life. But you got to expect it to happen. And God says, when you expect it, your mind will begin to open up. Your heart will be receptible. And you begin to see into the kingdom. The thing that God has in store for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. It said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. I'm talking about the gospel. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You may be seated. You may be seated. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all know I love worship, so I just can't help myself. Well, there's something with worshiping me and God. Things begin to shift in my mind, in my heart. When I get into that intimate place with God. You might be going through something right now. And no one knows about it. You might be hurting. And you come and put on a smile to come to church. And you sit here week after week with the same issue. And no one knows about it. But I come to tell you today that God says, I know. I'm waiting on you. I already gave you grace. I've shown you mercy. I gave you compassion. He says, I poured my spirit into you to show you how much I love you. And I breathe the Ruah, my presence, my spirit inside of you in that place that when you need healing you sense the presence of God flowing through your veins through the bloodstream to your organs and your body says so in that particular place where you buried all that hurt and that pain and that stuff that bombarded your mind God says in that place I provided the remedy it's called the word of God. The word of God is your remedy. And when you get into the word of God, you'll find out that it unlocks some things in your life. See, God's word, it works like a two-edged sword. It cuts going, but because of a double-edged sword, it cuts coming back. Come on now. So every time... I get into the word of God and the enemy think he got me. God said, take the sword of the spirit. Begin to just wield your sword. As you begin to wield your sword, say so you're smiting the enemy in his pathway so he got to get out the way. And he says, so every time you get in the word, he can't blind you. So my subject today is mind control. Mind control. Talk about it. I was sitting in the back when Pastor asked me to speak this morning. I came to my spirit. Mind control. You got a lot of folk in the house who got brainwashed. Then the mind control spell by the enemy. Uh, scripture here says, but if, 
It's a possibility. It may happen. Our gospel be hidden, obscure, invisible. It's only to them that are what? Lost. So then he says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which do what? Believe not. So you mean to tell me I can go to church week after week, Sunday after Sunday, and still don't be a believer? Because I go under the mind control of the enemy. The enemy tells me it's okay to go to church. It's okay to be on the deacon board, the mother board, to be a preacher, to be an apostle, to be a bishop, to be a teacher. It's okay to walk in those different gifts and still don't believe. Ain't that something? So when God gave it to me, I said, uh, that, 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 that means mind control. I'm reminded, Pastor was talking about it earlier, about the Incredibles. I love the Incredibles. And there was this one character called Megamind. Megamind, he had a big brain, but he's always trying to devise a plan to rule the world. So he came up with an with a, a idea, I can create this machine, and I can put it in the right place. I can connect to the satellites all around the globe, and at the same time, I can send a brainwave out. I can c- control everybody at the same time. They be under my bidding to do what I want them to do. Guess what? We have an enemy. He's called Megamind. The enemy, he has a strategy. He has a plan. And he says, if I can set my, my machine up in the house of God, I can make it look like they're preaching a gospel, but they're not believing it themselves. So I can set them in a position where I can reach the satellite around the globe of heaven and I can begin to reduce my brainwaves into their mindset to make them think they're never going to amount to anything. They're going to always be defeated. They're always going to be a failure. They're going to speak the same thing over their children. They're going to do the same thing in our house. Why? Because I'm controlling their minds. When God gave this, I, I laugh sometimes when God tells me stuff like this because it blows my mind. But that's how the enemy operates. Because he knows that I can control your thinking. I can manipulate you. Every promise that God spoke in his word, you'll never achieve it. Because I can keep you blinded. See, the thing about blind is you've been around a blind person. They have a stick. And the reason they have this stick is because when they're walking, they're, they're looking and touching things to make sure nothing's in their way going to cause them to trip. They can't see what's before them because they're blind. And the thing about a blind person, their hearing is sharp. I can hear everything going on around me, but I just can't see it. So guess what? They get an image in their minds. The enemy knows that I can keep you blinded from the gospel. I can put you in the mindset of being blinded where you never see where you're going. You won't have your guide in your hand. You never know what's coming before you because I can give you a blind attack. So when I come to attack you, you never know it's me until it hits you. So it says, let the light of the glorious gospel shines. Jesus is that light. He's that gospel. So everything is in Jesus supposed to be in you. So if you are a true believer, I was thinking something this week on the radio show we were talking about in our discussion about talismans. Anybody know what a talisman is? A talisman is an item or object of something that we use with a purpose that has two meanings. One, to ward off evil spirits. Second, to bring me good luck. Remember the rabbit's foot? Everybody, that's a talisman. A rabbit's foot is a talisman. Back in the 80s, everybody was gravitating to the rabbit's foot. If I can give me a rabbit's foot, I can get good luck. So everywhere I go, I'm going to have good luck. 
So you hold it. Oh, come on, bring me up, bring me up, bring me up. So you hold on to your item, your possession, and you expect that thing to have some type of magical power. But you know what? It's of the devil. And the devil is defeated. So it has no power. It has no authority. It can't do nothing in your life. And many times we come in the house of God, put on our crosses, and we hold on and cherish that cross as if it's a talisman. When God gave this to me, it blew my mind. He said a lot of times, a lot of preachers would put on a facade with the cross on their chest that, hey, I'm a man of God. I'm a bishop. I'm an apostle. I come in the house of God. You got to recognize me when I walk in because I'm a man of dignitary. I'm a man of clout. I'm a man of character. So you got to watch me. God says a talisman, witchcraft. It's nothing wrong with wearing the cross. But the cross that we need to wear is in our hearts. The cross that Jesus bore for our iniquity and our sin need to be embedded on your heart. That's why the word says every day we need to deny ourselves, take up our crosses daily and what? Follow after him. He wasn't talking about no physical cross. Something you can hold in your hand, you can hold it in prayer, just like the rosary beads. A lot of Catholic people got the rosary piece and they said, put to help them reach God. So they're praying to Mary instead of praying to God. Mary's not the intercessor. Mary can't bring you salvation. Our Redeemer brought us deliverance and salvation through the shedding of the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there will never be remission for our sins. So we get caught up in tangible things. But in Proverbs 4.23, says, above all else, guard your heart with all diligence. That means being watchful. For out of what? It, your heart, it flows the issues of life. Guess what he's talking about? All you Bible scholars in here. He's talking about when you put the word in your heart and you cherish the word of God in your heart. So when you guard in your heart, so when the thief comes now to kill, steal, and destroy, you guard it your heart. So out of it flows the word of God. If you don't deposit anything, you can't expect to get anything out in return. Just like going to the bank. You go to the bank, so I'll withdraw $1,000. They're going to look and say, do you got it in your account? You don't have a thousand dollars in your account. He's gonna say, No, we can't help you. God is the same way. God cannot help you if you don't help yourself by getting into the Word of God daily. If I don't deposit the Word in my spirit, my mind is gonna be messed up. My mind is gonna be warped. And when the enemy comes in, he's gonna take residency. I'm reminded of the parable Jesus was talking about. About a man who had a vineyard. And he planted a harvest. And he went to sleep. And it says, at night, an enemy came and sold some tares in his vineyard. And guess what happened? He got up the next morning, saw something unusual so, oh my God, an enemy is coming. Throw some tears in my yard. What am I going to do? If I pull it up, I'm going to pull the weed up. Jesus says it like this. Let them both grow together. So in other words, in the house of God, you're going to have some tears that are not born again, not believers. But he said, don't worry about them. You worry about yourself. Because when you allow me to separate, he said, I will separate in the end. Hallelujah. So when the enemy comes in, it says, be in the word of God so that when sinful thoughts enter into your mind, temptation will be recognized for what it is and what course it takes. The more I plant the seed, when he was talking about the seed, I said, he's all in the message today because the same thing God told me about seeds. What seeds are you planting in your house? 
What seeds are you planting in your children's lives? What seed are you planting in your heart? And if you don't know what you're planting, you need to go back and take an examination and begin to pay attention. What have I sown on the inside of my life? Because the Bible says, Galatians chapter 5, he said, be not deceived. Believe it, 5 and 7. Be not deceived, God's not marked. What's a man sow that she also reap? Because you don't sow anything positive in your life and the lives of your children and your family. How do you expect them to become better? Then we got a habit of saying, you just like your daddy. You just like your mama. You ain't gonna never be no good. You're gonna always be messed up. Your life's gonna be a drug addict. You're gonna be a, a wanderer, a vagabond. Cause ain't gonna be nothing. Mount to anything. You have to be careful of the seeds you speak out of your mouth to your children. Because the same thing you plant, that shall you also reap. And when God gives us a stern warning, you got to take an examination in the mirror of the word. You got to look at your heart to see where your heart is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Second point, we got to live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. You can't live without the Spirit of God. Just like if your heart stopped pumping, guess what's going to happen? They're going to put you on life support, and that's going to help you go on, get the heart back going again for temporary because it's not functioning on its own. But when you get in the Word of God, and you allow the word of God to be the source of your heart. The song says, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Everything I hope for and everything I'll be. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. If he's the center of your joy, guess what happens? There got to be something on the inside. There's nothing on the inside how can he be the center of your joy? Think about it. Because if you're trying to live without the guidance and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, how can you expect God to lead and direct you in the path that he's chosen for you to walk in if you're not getting in the word? Every time I get in the word of God, there is a revelation. God began to unfold a scripture. I could have read this scripture 20 years. And read it again. There's a different revelation. Because whatever I sow is what's going to come out. Just like the sower who went forth to sow some seeds. Some fell among thorns. Some fell among good ground. Some fell, fell on the wayside. All these different things. Jesus used an analogy. Because he wants us to know that if you don't sow the right things here, it's getting in here. What you sow up here goes in here. He says it like this. It's not what goes into a man that defiles him, corrupts him, or messes him up. But the thing that you plant on the inside of your mindset goes into your heart. And it radiates from the heart into the outward man. And you begin to behave and respond according to the dictates of your flesh. I'm almost done. Point number three. We're not to feed our minds with the things that promote sinful thoughts. We're not to feed our minds with things that promote sinful thoughts. We're all the human beings. We're all going to make mistakes. Our minds are prone to wonder why? Because we're flesh. But there's a mega mind that's using you as his instrument to keep you in bondage. But God said the battlefield of the mind can be won when you get to the place you recognize, what am I feeding on? What's going into my ear gate? What am I seeing in my eye gate? What's going into my mentality? What's going into my heart? Whatever it is that's on the inside of me is what's going to come out of you. So you got to guard your heart. But out of it flows the issues of life. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. That when I look upon young women, I will not sin. See, you got to be careful 
even looking at people. You can cause yourself to sin just from a look. Just for one look of looking at something with the lust of the eyes, the pride of life and the lust of the flesh will cause you to stray from your purpose and the destiny God has for you. Glory to God. My last point. We are to pursue hard after God. Replacing sinful thoughts with godly thoughts. You may ask the question, how do I do that? Everything we talked about, controlling your heart, control your tongue is another point. Because we are not careful sometimes of how we offend one another with our tongues. But guess what? Everything works together. Five senses. They all work together. And every sense that's operating in your body, it works in the spirit as well. Because what the spirit tells you to do, we have a habit. Say, not today, Lord. I'm indulging in my flesh. Not today, Lord. I'm lusting after something. Not today, Lord. I'm about to fornicate and adulterate. Not today, Lord, because my flesh wants to be satisfied. But when you pursue hard after God, it's getting to the place of recognizing his presence. Because the Lord's presence surrounds you every day. And his spirit is on the inside like a locomotive train just keeps on moving faster and faster inside of you with the word of God to remind you like a record that keeps playing over and over the same song. The word of God does the same thing in our hearts. When I get to the place and I make up my mind and say, Lord, I'm going to follow after you. I don't want the world. I don't want people. I don't want things that the world offer me, but I want to come hard after you, God. That means I got to get to the place of consecration. Got to get to the place of fasting and praying. Get to the place where I lay down my, myself as a sacrifice. So, Lord, so many times I've done things my way. But today, God, I want to go God's way. I want to follow after you, God. Because the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take your joy away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me. But the peace that I have, Lord, you gave it to me. It surpasses my natural understanding. And to think I'll make a decision. I'm going to run for Jesus all the days of my life. I'm going to cry out. And I want no rocks crying in my place. I'm going to call the name of the Lord. When I find myself between a rock and a hard place, I know how I can go to the hills when comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God, you've been good to me. Every time I find myself falling down in the pit of despair, you are right there reaching down to pick me up. And God, I want to tell you thank you. I want to tell you I love you. I want to tell you, God, you've been good to me. I want to worship your name. I want to magnify you. Cause you're good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Why don't you stand out of the room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, you're so good. Your mercy endures forever. God, we're so grateful. Lord, I pray that something is said today, God, that would challenge us, even provoke us to righteousness. That the things in our lives, the seeds that we planted, some things the enemy done, but there are things we done. That, God, we would take an examination of our hearts and allow the spirit of the living God to burn it up by the roots to take it out of us 
to straighten us that we can be more submitted and conducive to your will. I thank you, Lord God, for what you've done this hour. Be glorified, be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, magnify his name. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look, when you're bowing with your mind this week, I remember preaching a series of sermons. It's a mind thing. <laughs> Let the devil know. Tell the devil to get out your head. You're not welcome right here. Hallelujah. Give God a praise for the man of God today. The word. I, I said to myself, I said, Lord, I need a word. I know it's first Sunday, and, and, and Charles always said, if you ever need me, I'm always ready. <laughs> so you got to keep them guns loaded. Y'all hear me? Keep them guns loaded. Hallelujah. Stick with that word. You got to be in season and out of season, even when you ain't even think you ain't ready. God said you're ready. Amen. So, and I, I thank and praise God for him. Let's point our hands this way so God can give him back that strength. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm asking that, God, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Give him back what he has poured out to your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. It is, it is, it is something I, I, I really enjoy that word. It really means a whole lot. Uh, it almost looked like, almost seemed like he planned it. Because... <laughs> He had points and everything. I don't know how you got all them points together in that little time. But God be praised. Being ready in season out of season. Hallelujah. I want your hearts and minds to come in. Amen. Just, just, just lift your hands all over this place. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking, Lord, that you would touch your people from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, whatever they came with expectancy, whatever they were expecting today, God, I believe that they believed today, God, that was going to happen. I pray right now that they get just what they wanted from the Lord today. I pray if they needed healing, healing is taking place right now today. I pray that God, that whatever the need has been, whether they need a financial blessing, whether they need help in their homes, their jobs, whatever the case may be, God, I know that you are able. So, God, I declare that right now under the sound of my voice that this word has been water to their seed and that increase is coming in their direction right now. From the crowns of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord, every place that they walk into this week, God, I'm declaring that there's a blessing with their name on it. Every encounter is going to be a spiritual encounter. Hallelujah. Satan, your contract is canceled. Hallelujah for this week right now. You are out of here in the mighty name of Jesus that preached and already put you out. Hallelujah. I know you're plotting another plan right now, but we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cast you out. We cancel your contracts have been canceled. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, somebody's watching via Facebook Live. Lord, I'm asking that you would touch them in their homes right now. 
Somebody recently got some bad news, but God, I know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. Your word said that while we were yet praying, we even got to the what we wanted. Hallelujah. You already dispatched your angels, God. So, God, I thank you in advance for the healing. Cancer, you got to get out of here. Coronavirus, you got to get out of here. Hallelujah. Diabetes, get out of here. If you can name it, hallelujah. There's a name above all names, and that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So I thank you, Lord, that as the mothers prepare themselves for next Sunday, I pray that there be peace in the atmosphere. I pray that this Mother's Day bring joy, that love that we missed out on for a whole year, God. As we not only honor the mothers that will be here, we honor the ones that went on to be with you, Lord. We recognize them, God, because they have left an imprint in our lives and they have been a legacy like never before. God, you're an amazing God. And I want you to repeat after me this right here. I know some of you weren't here when we did it, but I want you to repeat after me, Lord. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for giving me another chance. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody say amen for that. Now for the benediction, Lord, when we go from this place, but never from your presence. May you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. God bless your Facebook. God bless your YouTube. God bless you, everybody. Won't you look at your neighbor and say, God bless you. Amen.